In a rapidly expanding omniverse of sci-fi content, two Terrans try to make sense of it all. From the latest to the greatest to the most thought-provoking science fiction content on the screen, we bring you Crowded Space Podcast! The Mandalorian, Season 3. I'm your host, Eric. And I'm your other host, Jared. And I guess we can't forget to say that we've already touched on the first essentially three episodes, more more or less. Yeah. And we'll re- retread that, at least in terms of synopsis. I mean, we both enjoyed that with the uh, the little what cyber cockroach robot <laughs> yeah. thing. And then uh, he gets captured and it sends Grogu out. Grogu finds Bo-Katan, which he had... So Bo-Katan comes, grabs the Darksaber, saves Din. Yeah, uses Darksaber to save his ass. And then they both escape. So then uh, he brings her her back to Children of the Watch. So then because he bathed in the waters, he's allowed to, you know, come back to the cult. And because Bo-Katan did it too, she's a member of the cult now. And then we go to the useless episode three with the scientist, blah, 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 blah. We thought it was kind of dumb. I wasn't impressed with it. I don't care about rehabilitating Imperials. I don't care how the, <laughs> right? how the Republic treats long, them. Yeah, it's a long synopsis. I really don't care because I mean, should... war is war. And I'm sure the Empire did bad, bad things to the, Imper- uh, the rebels when they captured them. So, you know, karma comes around. Mm. That's how it goes. We are at where the pterodactyl, whatever type of creature, steals the fle- uh, found <laughs> foundling from the Mandalorians, the yeah. ultimate warriors of the universe. This little creature comes down and grabs them, or not little, and takes off. So they chase him down. Mm. They run out of fuel, but I'm so happy that Bo-Katan is there to save the day with the fl- her flying <laughs> skills. <laughs> because Din's just a chump. He doesn't. He didn't know that you needed a shuttle to get it's to long, the bird. It's going to be a long synopsis with commentary. <laughs> 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 but I'm happy to do it. We're, we're talking about nine seasons here, so yeah, none seasons. of them thought to bring a feels ship. like well, nine, but it's really eight. <laughs> well, she's the only one there with a the ship at the time, right? Yeah. So she goes and she gets. They go and save the kid, right? After spending the night, because animals don't eat food as soon as they get it. They yeah, wake the next day. Yeah, no, because it's, it's, it's a morning snack. I swallow it and keep yeah. it in my... It's a, it's a morning snack. And stuff. So we, we mm. camp out instead and wait till the next day, then we do do the climb. Hey, the I, don't, I don't know anything about alien <laughs> bird physiology. <laughs> I'm not a xenozoologist. So, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah, saying. No, it was a tough... It's a tough pill, pill to swallow. Or <laughs> yeah. tough foundling. foundling to swallow. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. That's why. <laughs> Couldn't get it down. So like, oh. she saves it's the helmet. day. It's that helmet. It's where the helmet's like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank God he had his helmet on. He doesn't take it off. <laughs> that is the way. <laughs> so so Bo-Katan, thank, thank God she's there to save the day because she saves the day yet again. Brings the foundling back and brings those little birdies back with her. Princess and, power. And then, uh, yeah, that's when she's told, take your helmet off. So she takes her helmet on. Now she's walking two paths, not one. So we spent mm, Bo-Katan two, goes both ways. <laughs> yeah. We spent <laughs> two seasons complaining about not taking our helmet off. And all of a sudden, Bo-Katan can take her helmet off. She walks both paths. Armor gave her. Get out of jail so, free card. <laughs> so we end the episode there. We start the great, I call it like the pseudo friends episodes. Because in Friends, going to Friends real quick, <laughs> they used when 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 the ratings started dipping, they brought in other actors to try mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to spark it up. So they decided, hey, let's bring Jack Black, which is I, I don't mind Jack Black. I don't like Jack Black. Doesn't at all. have to do anything with Star Wars, but we'll bring Jack Black in. And then what's her name? The rapper Lizzo. Lizzo. I like. I don't Lizzo. even know who I the like Lizzo. Who the hell she is? Oh. Uh, Why are you in Star Wars? It's about dude? damn time. You're like rolling down the hill. Oh, she's got some. <laughs> she's got some really great songs. Anyway, you the like fun doesn't stop. Stop there, right? 
Mm-mm. No. Of course. I have to have some terrific Yeah, of course, then Amando is in the chump seat. He's not flying. He's in the chump seat where Grogu used to sit. Hey, I, I'm now. surprised she didn't give him the ball. Ooh. Like, give him a little ball and play with while while they're flying to the droid planet. You're telling me Chewie was a chump. Was no, you're I'm me. just saying. In Mando, that's the seat that oh, the- Grogu sits. It's not Mando. She's Mando now. So they get to the droid planet. And again, a good premise. I like the premise of droids being the like the worker force. Yeah, they essentially do a mission for for them in return for permission to go talk to the mercenary force, aka yeah. the Mandalorian army that Bo Katan presumably wants to rally. Right, because she had lost them. Yeah. Well, no, what we forgot actually was that the whole pirate strike. The pirates attack Navarro. Yes, we forgot the pirate strike. Yeah. Dude, that's important. That was kind of cool. I like the pirate strike. Bo Katan saves the day yet again, comes in. I, I feel like they both, well, yeah, she did. She but saves no, they the both, day. They both had their, like, their. Maybe that's their why cuisines. I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's Bo Katan's show now. I think we should have just, I think we should have just started in season one of The Mandalorian. Reboot it with her. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Might as well. Because. <laughs> So she has a great plan. She leads the man and the Mandalorians to battle. I I like the the fight. The fight scenes were cool because the pirates took over Navarro. <laughs> Navarro, there it is. Anyway, <laughs> so they save the day, and that's where the real Mando Bo Katan gets sent out and to gather the clans of the Mandalorians to return. Exactly. To their own. Yeah. Now that they've got, they were. Given a slice of land and yeah. o- openly welcome in it into planet, yeah. planet. Which I kind of like. Yeah. I thought that was kind of neat there. Yeah, except for as soon as they get back together, they're like, let's go take our home planet. It's yeah. like, yo, you finally found a place to, you, you to live nice and, spot. and you ditch it. It's not like a, a made of glass and just nasty and with big creatures <laughs> that's just gross. It's a nice area. But why wouldn't you want to stay there? But no, I digress. Let's go back to the synopsis. So... So we were at yeah. the droid planet. We're going through that. They finally talk to. I mean, there's nothing too important happens there other than well, th- they solve the problem with the with the droids. Yeah. Uh, hi, Christopher Lloyd, and then <laughs> you're a Bye-bye. bad guy. Yeah, spoiler. Yet again, and uh, and then she goes and challenges uh, Axe Woves. Yeah. For right for so command the of the army she whips his ass of course and then he points out well you don't have the dark saber and then and Jin goes Din, well Jin, then like a like a chump comes up and says here you go here's the lights here you not go not like here's a chump dark- like a man of of honor because she's yeah, now saved him multiple times that's true she and did and so he swore his oath to her you know he's kind of yeah. like a knight and she's the queen so and here's the saber that's the way to to look at it no longer the Mando show, mm, but now he, it's the Bo Katan show. It really did him more harm than good. It's still the Bo Katan show, man. So anyway, so she gets the light, she gets a dark saber and leads the troops back to Navarro, Navarro. where they immediately decide to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they head to Mandalore. <laughs> what did you think of the ship when they land there and the that sailing vessel that they had? The- First impression, like, oh, that's cool. And then I'm like, I'm thinking about it. Oh, we go, is that necessary? You don't have anything better than this, and is it? No, well, that's a great question. Is it necessary? Was any of that subplot necessary? What were those guys doing there? They couldn't they communicate out. out. They couldn't communicate like, out and be like, "Look, all of a sudden and they're they were there, and they didn't even know the imps were there." Come on, you because, guys are worthless. Because they knew that the ultimate warrior Bo Katan showed up, and they had to come out of the. They're like, the ah, thing. she's got it. We don't need to tell her the imps here. Like, what are you guys doing? There's literally nothing else to do on that planet, right? <laughs> Like, Except for he's, yeah, wait play for video games in the back. Yeah, what have you guys been doing? If you know there's him there, uh, so we they, waited there in season two, episode two of season three. Yeah, he was there. Okay. Why didn't he get any sort of contact with these people when he was there? Oh wait, it's not Bo Katan. It's it's Din Djarin. It's <laughs> So anyway, so we get on. We get on the boat with the big monster shows up again. And again, why would you leave the beautiful waterfall and the lake for this crap? Well, it's your home To planet. live underground. You know, you can, you I can get it. Po- yeah. pose it. Yeah. Ask 
the people fighting over. But I guess if the you Holy just have, but I guess if you right. have your helmet shit on all the time, why do you need sunlight, right? So live, <laughs> live in the freaking caves, man. <laughs> Navarro is pretty nice. <laughs> we all know the real reason to live on, on Mandalore now is the mining. But yeah. For yeah. the best car, yeah. Yeah, for the best car. So we find out that the Imperials have a secret base there. Yep. And one thing leads to another, and they fight. We don't want to go through too much into it because you want people to watch it, right? I mean, you want to really we've, go into this much we've detail. We've trampled all over that line throughout the, the history of this podcast, so I wouldn't worry about spoilers. I, well, I, I don't it, want to go into, into I do too like much because then it's going to make me, it's yeah. going to affect my. And let's just say there's a lot of fights back and forth with Gideon, who's at uh, at, yeah, at who's the base now. At the hidden base on Mandalore. And, right. Because they were mining the best car there. And. Uh, Essentially, we can't forget that Grogu's in that the newly refurbished IG twenty two. Yeah, in his little. Oh no, IG twelve. Twelve. So he's manning the the, the yes the yes robot. yes no no no. Yeah. Um, and kind of comes to 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 I wonder, the aid. So I wonder if they're gonna make a big toy of it so you can play. And hit but no yeah, no, I, it's a lot to unpack that last episode. Uh, oh well, two then. pages. Well. <laughs> We're still going to start with the high notes. All right. You so, can start the high notes because yeah, I, I only have I like two. <laughs> the Mandalorian season three. I'm your host, Eric. And I'm your other host, Jared. And I guess we can't forget to say that we've already touched on the first essentially three episodes, well, more, more or less. Yeah. And we'll re- retread that at least in terms of synopsis. Let's dive right on into the high notes. That's where the high notes come in. Okay, we're, we're good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know what I would do without you. <laughs> that dude in my ear keeps talking. I'm trying to ignore him, but. Well, so if I. <laughs> What's your high notes, my friend? I like that Din Djarin was trying to show off Grogu when he first kind of reunited with the children of of the watch and essentially had grogu challenge this other foundling to yeah. to a duel and With then splat guns yeah. yeah and so the foundling was kind of giving him some some guff and being like he can't fight you know and and mando being like well mm, this might be a lesson for you then <laughs> uh i really like that that scene of the, the proud dad moment you yeah. know them keeping going on with the relationship building between Grogu and 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 Jin, and that's one of the things that actually I think we forget to mention in the synopsis is that he did uh, adopt uh, him in 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 the end, and so I thought it was kind of a which slow, is a high note for sure. Yeah, yeah. A, a slow a slow build in in the relationship in in this season. I don't think there was any like super super high notes. You know, I I definitely didn't choke up the season like when he took his helmet off for, for I, Grogu. I choked and, up, but in the wrong way. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be spicy! Well, it's okay, gonna we'll, be we'll, spicy. We'll, we'll have to wait for that. Um, well, so I'll, I'll I'll let you get in this into the spirit. Of, I want to get the into the spirit here with some. Well, I I definitely liked the culture of the Mandalorians and how that was portrayed in the way, like you said, with the foundling. Yeah. The creed and, yeah. and actually seeing some of the ceremonies yeah, I, and, I, and then I really teaching Bo-Katan that. the, when she was whatever children of the watch for a week. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of my, do you have another one? Yeah. I'll, I might, I might double, double up here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the action scenes I thought still continuously delivered throughout throughout the whole season. So the choreography was yeah. was was top notch. Uh, I know that you feel that Bo Katan got a little bit too of the, too much of the limelight, but her fight versus uh, Axe Woves I thought was 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 really was really cool. Yeah, and they a lot of the pulling out essentially all the stops, all the different Mando tricks with the grappling and the shield, the flamethrower. Yeah jetpacks and, be totally and like all that, that right so uh, so that was that was kind of a one of the several high notes for me and i guess while we're talking about the action scenes along the same line to make sure that Jin Jaren gets a little bit of love and attention uh, by us even if not by the 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 studio in this season was him 
going through the guards that like the stormtrooper kind of guardsmen one by one lowering the the laser yeah, shields kind of like it had a, that yeah go no, ahead yeah kind of like in episode one yeah with yeah, with, yeah. with uh obi-wan with the shield the ray shield right and then just yeah. them giving us these nice little bite-sized battles boom 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 yeah uh, combat one one by one which again it's it's hard to do the the choreography and make it believable when you've got 10 people fighting one person. It's yeah. like, no, if they really knew what they were doing, they would just, just lynch mob him and jump on him all at once. And, and it's over. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it's almost never believable, but here they made actually a really nice kind of situation where it made sense more or less for him to be fighting the guards one by one by one, the way that they were working the shield. Yeah. So, so good on them for that. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, well, that was that was a double. So back to you. Is this is you got one more? I got there. one more, and I love double barrel high notes coming from our host Eric I, tonight. I, I like I like the plan. I like the planet, Mandalore, and I also like the mines, like the the underground too. I thought I thought they did a good job on both of those things to give us uh, areas that kind of like Star Wars in general didn't really touch on, like. Uh, you know what I mean? The the planet, the way it looked, and the way the, the oh that it was just total slag. Yeah, you know, and then when they went underground, the they surface. had like the city underground type of thing. Like it was slagged over or something like that. Like it was cool. I liked I liked those sets. I enjoyed that. Mm. Yeah. So you like the scenery? I like the scenery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also like the 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 planets too that they went to like. So IG twelve, how'd you feel about that? I mean, yeah, it's a great I, grab I, for a new toy. So I thought it them. was, I thought it made sense, right? It made for some just awesome scenes. It, it made sense to have Grogu kind of like out of his little shell and into right, yeah, something. showing that he's growing as a force user mm. and just as a character in, right. in general. He was good as big boy droid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, I, and I enjoyed the whole yes no thing. I thought it was fun. Oh yeah, when he's like picking up the like fruit and Jinjar is like, "This is not working for me." So as <laughs> as a parent of a almost three year old, like I yeah, as a former parent of a three year old, yeah. I totally get that too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes as an eighteen year old too, but that's <laughs> and then while we're talking about droids, I actually really like the droid bar scene. It was just so weird and oh, it was like and, a reverse. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. cool. <laughs> We yeah. don't serve your type here. Yeah, I thought it was neat. That was a cool little like, uh, rev- like a Bizarro cantina mm, with, and with the droids instead of the and humans. Just doing some world building for what it's like to be a droid in the Star Wars universe, right? Especially one that's enslaved, right? Pretty much. Yeah, kinda. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that they there's some of those themes were actually brought up as part of Solo, which is like. One of the few things I liked about it. At any rate. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about that. Pez's uh, character and uh, essentially when they were having the, the, the moot, you know, the, the vote or whatever to yeah. to decide if they were going to go and help out the, the pirates. Yeah. And he gets up and you think he's going to trash talk because him and Jin have kind of been at odds here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vizsla. And yep. yeah. And then he. He stands by him. Yeah. Uh, essentially, you know, sticks sticks to the creator, which or whatever, is which so. was really cool because you you saw a different light because you always thought, oh man, he totally wants to be like take everything away from Mando because he wanted the dark saber and everything. But in the end, he like you said, his loyalty was is what brought him front and center and helped him get the other Mandalorians in check too. So yeah, that was a good scene. That was definitely mm. a high note for sure. So question as a way to. Uh, <laughs> switch over to possibly to the to the low notes what'd you think about grogu's force bubble in the end scene uh, is that static for you or is why the hesitation it's, a, it's it's going into the a low note for me because <laughs> you're flying a starship into oh, a building. okay stop 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 <laughs> and cue low notes <laughs> And uh, I, I'm assuming I'm going to start us off since the question was <laughs> yeah, asked. Yeah, yeah, you're hot. You're coming in hot like a starship. Oh, freaking coming Mandalore. in hot like a starship in Mandalore, man. 
So Grogu has a force bubble, which I thought it was kind of cool. I'm, a little, I'm, da- I'm down with a force bubble. A little I am Groot type of thing in uh, mm-hmm. Guardians uh, C- uh, movie. The first I movie. am Grogu. Yeah, yeah I on. am Grogu. Anyway, so he puts a f- uh, force bubble on the f- of the flames from the crash starship into a building. It's just flames. Now, to me, how gravity works and how things are made, there's also debris that would have came down. Mm. On top of them. Oh, you're just scratching the, the surface of that train wreck of a shipwreck. <laughs> that <laughs> starship wreck. That scene really made no sense at all. It made no sense. Like And okay. I th- I feel like it was just put together so they could get rid of Gideon. <laughs> and the Dark Saber too. Because the Dark Saber got destroyed. Because yeah, it's, it, it was crushed kinda, by Gideon. They could have just they left kinda, it at crushed, They totally but got yeah. annihilated by the fire. Mm-hmm. So now there's no dark saber whatsoever. We didn't really which is die. T- it's ambiguous. which is like a major part of this whole storyline, like the history, mm-hmm. culture of the Mandalores. And all of a sudden, they just <laughs> they just crapped on the last two seasons. They put together not only that, but Rebels as well, and Clone Wars too. It was a lot of setup and backstory with just just mm-hmm. crap. But well, that's the thing. I thought the building was next to the forge, right? And then the next scene, they're they're at hanging the forge. out. It's lighting up. Works perfect. Like, wait, what? He just crashed a starship yeah, in, so into that. To... Really reminds me of my least favorite scene from I think it was season two, the spider cave, essentially, because yeah, he I crashes through all the ice. I da, skipped da, 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 that whole, yeah. And and I was like, wait, how? He's so far down in, and then he just flies out, and it. Yeah. Like, it, it didn't make any sense, no. and that's how I felt about this whole crash in, into the base. And it's like, yeah, a little note for me was, again, you said, oh, the guy died. Well, Paz uh, Vizsla, Vizsla. Was, was definitely, like, a, a low note. I mean, it was a cool kind of, I'm going to go out, blaze of glory, good old Mandalorian-style, old Creed yeah. death. Last Jedi but, characters you know, really took him out, too. Bo-Katan's story, I thought, was still his story because, again, he's indebted to her. So th- I guess that's why it was okay with me. Um, and then the scenes were just awesome with her. So yeah. it's not like... They were good. They and I won't say they were not good. With empty calories, it's like, oh, no. But... Because... Katie with Katie Stackoff, right? Is that her Yes. Name? She's a good... A- she's Uh-oh. a great actress, and she really works hard to do what she does. Mm. Nothing against her whatsoever. It's the... The direction they took this entire season, except for the first two, it, after it, they went to the doctor and the whole how they treat Imperials, it just went south from there. I don't know what happened, but all I'm saying is season three was garbage. The last set after the first two were just not any good for me. It just didn't work. They could have done more with them together like they did towards the end of the episode towards the end of the final episode where they work together. They work together throughout the, the not, whole the whole time. Not through the whole time, dude. So he was sitting Her there. saving him, I guess, that's that's this one scene you wish never happened. No, I like the her wrong. saving him. Because, but don't you, everything don't you he remember did, when he everything went, that you don't like that he did after that, I think, when that he, he didn't do was because When he went to see him. her, she was lazing around on her couch. Right. She's like, I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Right. She was in a funk. And all of a sudden, she turns it around, and then she's the lead of the whole series for the next five episodes. Yeah, I mean, five episodes. And, and he helps her turn it around. That's something we talked about before, and I, I still still feel strongly about it. His His attachment to the old ways and she even says so herself like he's more mandalorian than any of us here even though he's not of of blood yeah right and that commitment and that honor is what i think brings her around yeah because yeah, essentially bo katan did to the mandalorian what din Jaren exactly. did to, to boba fett yeah we were okay with it with boba fett because it was like oh this is actually way better than boba fett's story yeah, this is what i wanted story. And and for me, Bo Katan's story was just as as good as anything that was going on previously in the Mandalorian. So I I, I was okay with it. Like I said, would I have liked to see them stick to Jin Jaren? Uh, yeah. Is is the fact that they didn't gonna make this really fine offering of Star Wars lore um, unpalatable to me? No. Like I'm I'm totally fine with the majority of the case majority of the choices that they that they made. 
I'm not. Um, but we'll get to that. <laughs> well, so that's why I was like, oh, it, for me, a lot of what happened was logical uh, because she saved him. I thought, so I thought you wouldn't like her saving him because no, I that's the ultimate chumping, sense. right? He fell into an easy trap and got his ass kicked and had to send his little kid to ask to, to run for help. Yeah. That's for me where he's the chumpiest in, in the season. No, I don't. So where so. do you think he's the chumpiest when they go and save, when they, when they go and save the foundlings, he, he didn't really take part much part in it. She did most of the, the, most of the work. And then when they did the battle for against the pirates, again, she did all the work. He was just in the background. I give you, I'll give you the foundling with the bird. She was definitely, that was her stealing the the show. Uh, That's where it started. Pirate battle, pirate battle was pretty 50 50. They were both in their ships and they were both. Yeah, but doing still, the same she was thing, the one that so. did all the battle plan and all that stuff. She's the leader of the Mandalorians. So that's she's what not the leader of the Mandalorians, dude. With the, the armor is. She's like their spiritual leader. She's kind of, that's she how I the, see her. She is their leader. I feel that's how the ending was thrown together. Like the whole, thrown, the, the whole three episode, thrown, dude, It started off thrown. with getting fucking compared so to. I let, I hate Jack Black, especially if he's like the focus of like the main character of a movie. Like I can't, I can't do it. He's just not, he's just, he grates on me. And I was actually fine with him and the Mandalorian because he didn't go over the top. He just stayed in this lane and and played the, an all right character. And again, they were bringing up the Imperial reforming, which is like, oh god, god, no, 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 no. I don't want more more of that because that one episode was definitely I don't need my it. biggest static. So it's we're, we're on full full on rant rant mode yeah. here. So oh, well, we are. We'll, I, I'll, I got I'll us throw there. The stack, static in. But they didn't go there. And so for me, it was just like, oh, the right amount for, for a, a cameo. And I did think it had substance. It, it moved it, it moved that whole story story line along. So I was fine with it. Uh, I like Lizzo's work. And so I'm going to be more forgiving. But to say it verbatim that, especially now that we've seen the whole, the whole season, that they spent, what was it? It was more than half an episode on the Imperial Reformment. Yeah. And in in that story, and it really didn't pay off. Like that whole clip really could have been like an opening scene, you know, before the credits. Yeah, like they did, and I thought that was uh, done really well with uh, when Axe Wolves was leading the Mandalorian army, and they did the whole opening scene of the star crust lovers that they had the bounty on to bring the the prince back. Yeah, I know. So again, yes, was it a side story, but it only took five minutes and it, yeah. it had that Star Wars feel to it. It, it really did. Yeah. So that's how you do it. Why couldn't they have done that with the doctor scene, right? They could have compressed all For that. For some crap. reason they thought they needed a whole freaking like you said, they needed like a little episodes. nod to Andor. Like I was expecting a, a, to a cameo up. from I, I someone. Was totally, I the, was totally expecting uh, just because it's like, show up. and again, even the if payoff, it's the wrong era. It, I mean, if it's the wrong timeline. <laughs> I, again, what did that set up? The Gideon's back. Okay, well, they already did that. Yeah, we, when when they went to the ship and the ship was broken into. Yeah, that's it. So done. Not so not this, this that's static. I think it was we almost called it static the first time we talked about it, but it's even worse now that I see that there was nothing else that episode was really setting up other than yeah, there's kind of a reformed spy that's not so reformed. Yeah, which I could care less, honestly. I thought the ending was the best thing about this because it's the ending. Honestly, <laughs> that should be a high note. Actually, <laughs> just to backtrack for a second, I was happy to see the end, and let's hope that it is the end. Please don't make any more. Let it die here. Oh, okay. I don't want to see so any you're, more Mando. You're, you're completely done with the Mando. If it wasn't for Ahsoka coming out, I would be canceling my Disney Plus right now. Oh, okay. I'm All right, done that, with it. that puts it in, in perspective. I was happy to see the end. I think it was a great ending that he's he's with Grogu and he's his dad, and they are living a, a, a nice little cabin. And I thought the that's all, folks, with the little type of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, that <laughs> I think that was perfect. That and was I a think, little weird. And I, I think it was, it was a, a perfect ending. And please don't make any more because you're just terrible. It's just terrible. This, Yeah. Compared to the last two seasons, I think when they brought Grogu back 
from Luke, I think it just derailed everything. It ruined the whole all what they the what Favreau had set up with Filoni, and they saw it was a cash cow when they wanted money from the merchandise and Gro- and Grogu brought the merchandise back for Disney, so they mm. brought Grogu back. They didn't want him to go. Well, guess what? That just derailed everything. Because I think honestly, I think he should have stayed with Luke. Yeah, the the last thing was was mixed for me because. I like that, okay, if they are going to do another season, that they left them, uh, you know, those two kind of on their own, on Navarro, not with the rest of the people, as in, oh, if there is another season, they're going to go back to the roots of, you know, kind of lone wolf and cub going out on bounties and seeing Well, not bounties at anymore. At it's at like his, at his going best. after... It's still a bounty. Imperial it's whatever. Revenant or whatever. Yeah, it is. still, right? It's... But well, like it's going to be hunt, head hunting. Yeah. Or, but then it's also a little static because it doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, we went and rescued Mandalore and saved it and got our planet back. We did all of that for him to go back to Navarro. But again, that's maybe just his honor towards towards Bo, Bo-Katan. But I really think because Grogu didn't stay with Luke, it derailed the entire storyline they were working on. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> While Jared thought that The Mandalorian was still a, a decent offering in season three, it looks like Eric is is, Sourpuss. is, <laughs> is done with the, the franchise almost in, in general. So just want to take a moment, take a deep breath, relax, and remind you all that it's not the destination. It's the journey. Later. See ya.